lecture of week two. Yesterday we introduced second order circuits and second order differential equations. As we discussed before, it is possible to use frequency domain analysis or Laplace transforms to solve second order differential equations with an arbitrary input such as x of t, just like we used integrating factors to solve first order differential equations with arbitrary inputs like x of t. And we will study this technique later in the quarter However, for now, we are going to focus on the time domain solution by using second order differential equations. So in today's lecture, we will describe the different types of responses for second order circuits and discuss how to solve second order differential equations for all three types, including overdamped, underdamped, critically damped, and another kind of underdamped circuit, which is undamped. The complete response for a system is the sum of the natural and the forced responses we discussed before where the forced response is due to the input assuming the initial conditions are zero, and the natural response is due to the initial conditions or stored energy assuming that the input is zero. Another way to write this is y of t is equal to the sum of y n of t and y f of t. To find the forced response, the first thing we will do is write the governing differential equation in terms of y f of t, the second derivative of y f of t, plus two zeta omega sub n, the first derivative of y f of t, omega sub n squared y f of t equals k omega sub n squared times a. Because remember our input is a step input, so x of t is a. One particular solution is y f of t equals k a. This is the output for a constant under DC steady state conditions. To find the natural response, we put y n of t in our governing differential equation, and we get the second derivative of y n of t plus two zeta omega sub n, the first derivative of y n of t plus omega n squared y n of t equals zero. We will assume that the solution has the form c e to the r t. And when we take the second derivative and the first derivative and substitute that in, we can simplify this equation down to c e to the r t times r squared plus two zeta omega sub n r plus omega n squared equals zero. This polynomial is called the characteristic polynomial. The roots of this polynomial indicate what type of response the system will have. The quality and characteristics are summarized in the table on the next page. A comparison of these three types is also shown in figure one. When the characteristic polynomial has two distinct real roots, the type of response is overdamped or zeta greater than one. It has the complete response form of y of t equals ka plus c1 e to the r1t plus c2 e to the r2t, and it has a slow response and a long settling time. When the characteristic polynomial has two equal real roots, r and r, the response is critically damped. Zeta is equal to one. The complete response is y of t is equal to ka plus c1 e to the rt plus c2t e to the rt, and the response is fast and has a short settling time. When the characteristic polynomial has complex conjugate roots, r equal negative sigma plus or minus j omega d, we say that the response is underdamped and zeta is less than one. So the complete response is y of t is equal to ka plus c e to the negative sigma t sine of omega d t plus theta. And omega d, the damping frequency, is equal to the natural frequency omega n times the square root of one minus zeta squared. The characteristics of this response is it's the fastest but it has a long settling time. The last type of response is undamped. Undamped means that zeta is equal to zero, so this means there's no damping, so the output will oscillate forever. It has imaginary conjugate roots, r equals plus or minus j omega n, and it has the form y of t equals ka plus c sine of omega nt plus theta. Figure one shows a graph of the output of a system for overdamped, critically damped, and underdamped. Notice that overdamped has no overshoot and no oscillations. Critically damped has a little bit of overshoot, but it settles quickly on its final value. And then underdamped has more oscillations and takes the longest to settle. Okay, let's look at an example. Assume that the following system is initially at rest, which means that the position and the velocity are zero, or y of zero equals zero, and y dot of zero equals zero, and the input is a constant step, x of t equals a u of t. What is the complete solution y of t for t greater than or equal to zero? 
So the first thing you have to do is to determine the type of response as well as the natural frequency, the static gain, and the damping ratio. So first I'm going to write our governing standard differential equation, y double dot of t plus 2 zeta omega sub n y of t plus k omega n squared y of t, which equals k x of t. So by comparing coefficients, we find that k is equal to 2, omega n is equal to the square root of 2, and zeta is equal to 3 over 2 and the square root of 2. So what you see here is that zeta is greater than 1, so we have an overdamped response. Another way to see that zeta is greater than 1 and that we have an overdamped response is to find the roots of the characteristic polynomial. Remember, the roots of the characteristic polynomial can be found by using c e to the rt times r squared plus 3r plus 2 equals 0 from the prior lecture. So you find the roots of r squared plus 3r plus 2 by setting it equal to 0. And when you solve, you get that r1 is equal to negative 2 and r2 is equal to negative 1. And remember, when you have two distinct real roots, that also tells you that you have an overdamped response. So if we look at the table that we just reviewed on the prior page, the form of the solution for an overdamped response is y of t equals ka plus c1 e to the rt plus c2 e to the rt. So next we substitute in the values we already know, which are k, r1, and r2. So we have y of t equals 2a plus c1 e to the negative 2t plus c2 e to the negative t. Now we have to use our initial conditions to solve for c1 and c2. One of our initial conditions is that y of 0 is equal to 0. So that is 2a plus c1 plus c2 equals 0. Well, I have two unknowns, so I need two equations. So we find the second equation, which is the first derivative of y evaluated at 0, is equal to 0. So that's y dot of 0, which gives me negative 2c1 minus c2 equals 0. And now you can use substitution, addition, subtraction, etc. to solve for c1 and c2, which yields that c1 is equal to 2a and c2 is equal to negative 4a. And finally, we write the solution. y of t is equal to 2a plus 2a e to the minus 2t minus 4a e to the minus t. And because this is the solution for t greater than or equal to 0, one way to show that is to multiply it by u of t. Let's start the final example for today's lecture. Assume that the following system is initially at rest, y of 0 equals y dot of 0 equals 0, and the input is a constant step, x of t equal a u of t. What is the complete solution y of t for t greater than or equal to 0? As before, the first thing we're going to do is to write the standard governing differential equation and compare the coefficients. The system is y double dot of t plus 4y dot of t plus 4y of t equals 4x of t. The standard equation is y double dot of t plus 2 zeta omega sub n y dot of t plus omega n squared y of t equals k omega n squared x of t. Omega n is equal to 2 radians per second, k is equal to 1, and zeta is equal to 1. Since zeta is equal to 1, 
we have a critically damped response. And recall that the other way to find that it's a critically damped response is to solve the characteristic polynomial r squared plus 4r plus 4 equals 0. So the roots of this is a repeated real root and it's negative 2. So the form of the solution is y of t equals ka plus c1 e to the rt plus c2t e to the rt. Substituting in the values for k and r, we have y of t is equal to a plus c1 e to the negative 2t plus c2t e to the negative 2t. And as before, we use the initial conditions in order to find c1 and c2. So y of 0 is equal to a plus c1, which equals 0. So c1 is equal to negative a. y dot of t is equal to negative 2c1 e to the negative 2t minus 2c2 t e to the negative 2t plus c2 e to the negative 2t. y dot of 0 is equal to negative 2c1 plus c2, which equals 0. And we know that c1 is equal to negative a, so c2 is equal to negative 2a. And the final solution is y of t is equal to a times 1 minus e to the negative 2t minus 2t e to the negative 2t. And because this is for t greater than or equal to 0, we multiply by u of t. And this concludes our today's lecture on solving second order differential equations. Thank you.